This video is picking up right where the previous video left off. I'm in part 080, Matrix Algebra. All the code that I'm going to show you in this video is going to work perfectly in Octave, exactly as I'm demonstrating it here in MATLAB. I'm going to scroll on down to example 10.1, page 354 in the book. The book here is MATLAB for Engineers, 5th edition, and I've got some PowerPoint slides to set up this uh, example that we're going to do right here. This is going to be a center of gravity problem. So finding the center of gravity is very important for a variety of engineering applications. And this is how the book sets up the problem. We've got this nice clip art of a spaceship right here. Uh, and I'm just going to skip ahead to the details. Now, the details are very silly. Uh, the book has decided that we're going to find the center of mass of some item. But all we have is a bolt, a screw, a nut, and a bracket. Presumably, we would have a larger, more complicated uh, object that we're finding the center of mass of, and this is just a small piece of it as a demonstration. So anyway, for each of these items, we know the x, y, and z coordinate and the mass of the item. So those are our inputs, the locations in x, y, z, and the mass, and our output is going to be the location of the center of gravity. Our output is going to be an x, y, z coordinate. And good news, the way to calculate, for example, just the x coordinate, although you can extend this to the other coordinates, is to multiply the x coordinate of each of the components with that component's mass and then add them all up together. And if that sounds like a dot product, well, that's because that's exactly what it is. A dot product is simply multiplying a bunch of pairs of numbers together and then summing up the result. Now, a little bit of notation. I don't want to get too much into notation, but if you're going into a math or an engineering or a physics or many of the sciences, you need to at some point get comfortable with the summation symbol, which is this sigma right here. The sigma just represents a bunch of addition. It's a shorthand for saying add a bunch of things together. So let me walk you through this from left to right. X bar on the left here is our X coordinate of the center of mass, and it equals this fraction. And in the numerator of this fraction, we have our dot product. You can see it's circled right there on the right. Our dot product is going to be the sum from 1 through 4, because we have four components, so the first component, the second, the third, the fourth, of, so the sum of, the product of that corresponding component's x coordinate times that corresponding component's mass. So x sub i, m sub i is the ith component's x coordinate and mass. So x coordinate of item 1 times the mass of item 1 plus x coordinate of item 2 times the mass of item 2 and so on up to 4 divided by the total mass and equaling the total mass can also be expressed as a sum it's just the sum of the masses so the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of m sub i and again that numerator is the dot product so it's the dot product in the numerator divided by the sum of the masses and this is the result that we should get, this 0.8667 for the x coordinate. Now then, I do have a slide showing MATLAB, but we're just going to do it in MATLAB itself. So let's go back to MATLAB. All right, here we go. I'm going to run this code. I actually have two ways of calculating it, because again, I really want to emphasize the simplicity behind the scenes. So the, this is not the easiest way to calculate the results here. I'm going to show you the easier way down below. But this might be clearer to read, potentially. So I've got a vector of all the masses up here, and then I've got a vector of all the x-coordinates. And to get the x-coordinate of the center of mass, I take the dot product of my x-vector with my mass vector, and I divide by the sum of the masses, just as was shown in the PowerPoint. I display that out, and then I have a vector of the y-values. And I dot product the y-values with the masses and divide by the sum of the masses, and display that out, and then I do the same thing with z. All right, and there's my solutions right there. You can see the x coordinate is in fact the same as what the uh, PowerPoint slides said. Now, these are the exact same numbers, but the calculation is much shorter than this. Scrolling down only slightly, here's that calculation. It's just a matrix multiplication. Because matrix multiplication is a bunch of dot products. So I did have to put my coordinates into a matrix, and I had to make sure they were organized appropriately. In this case, I have x, y, and z on separate rows. And I did have to transpose the mass, and I could have organized things slightly differently, but this is just how I chose to organize it. So my solution is my coordinates matrix, matrix multiplied, a sequence of dot products, with 
the transpose of the mass vector, and then all of that element-wise divided, not matrix divided, but element-wise divided with the sum of the masses. And I get my solution right there. And that's it. And, you know, this is certainly easier to write out, but I think sometimes it's harder for people to understand because it's doing so much work for you behind the scenes. And so that's why I also wrote it out in this way, which you can study uh, because, you know, this document is available. Link in the video description. Okay, now a little bit confusingly, I'm going to skip this example. I'm going to do this example with the force vectors in the very next video, but I want to skip that for now because there's a little bit of background information I got to give. So I'm going to skip that and move down to matrix multiplication for a fast food example. So this is a bit of a silly example, but it works for basically any sort of commercial interaction that you want to imagine. We have the cost of various items at this burger joint, and then we have various customers, for example, who have different orders. So the first customer has three burgers, two fries, and one drink. And so we can represent their order with this three, two, one vector right here. And all the other customers have different orders. And so we represent their orders with different vectors. And we put all those vectors into a single big old matrix. So one row for each customer. And we've got a vector of the prices of the items. Let me actually resize and run this screen. All right. So there's our matrix of customer orders. There's our vector of prices displayed out. And then I just do A times B, matrix multiplication A times B, and I get the total that each customer owes for their order. This is not the only way to calculate that. I could also multiply the B transpose times the A transpose, or I could have organized the customers originally along columns and the prices originally along rows and just matrix multiplied without the transposes. There are different ways to set this up, but there are also incorrect ways to set this up. Now, when I do it with the transposes here, I get a horizontal result, but it is the same numbers. But you do have to be careful, right? Suppose I just don't transpose A, so I just took the transpose off there. Well, now there's a problem because the dimensions don't line up. So it is very important to keep track of what the dimensions are for the matrices that are involved. You can always use the size function to determine, you know, what are the dimensions of A? Oh, it's four rows and three columns. That works in Octave as well as in MATLAB. And let's do another simple little example here. A couple of simple little examples. So these are also from the MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition. And this question asks us to determine the heat capacity of some particular object. And this object is composed of different parts or different materials. And uh, you can see the masses of the three different materials and the three different heat capacities of the materials. Now, I'm no expert in this area. I'm much more of a programmer than a physicist or an engineer, but it turns out that the overall heat capacity of our object is the product of each mass with each heat capacity, so for each uh, individual component, so 250 times 0 0.45 plus 100 times 4.2 plus 10 times 0 0.9. Hey, that's a dot product. The solution to this whole question, which is like an end of chapter question, is literally just all this setup followed by one little dot product. Let me actually run this section here. And there we go. We have these three masses. We have these three heat capacities. We dot product those two vectors and we get our solution and that's it. And this just happens to crop up in a lot of different situations. The next example is also from the book and we have some sort of molecule. And I don't have the book in front of me, so I don't remember what the molecule is, um, but we have the atomic weights of each of the atoms in the molecule. And then we have the count of each of the atoms in the molecule. And we can use this with a dot product to find the molecular weight. And this should make sense, because I mean, this sort of physics works for macro objects as well as micro objects, right? If you have weights for X, Y, Z items, and you have some big component built out of 2x and 6y and 1z of the items, well then the overall weight is going to be 12 times 2 plus 1 times 6 plus 16 times 1. And we're just doing that here with atoms in a molecule. I don't remember, I think it's like a carbon and an oxygen, but I could have those backwards. This is definitely a hydrogen here. But in any case, this is the solution to, again, this end of chapter problem. And I emphasize that partly for my students who often overcomplicate these, thinking that there needs to be some big calculation involved but no, it, it's kind of really just the dot product here. And that just gives you your solution. And that's all for this video. Next video, we're going to scroll back up to that example that I skipped. 
Uh, and then beyond that, we'll move on to uh, matrix powers and matrix inverses and singular matrices.